What's going on everyone? Welcome back to the channel. Thanks for checking out today's video. We're back here with the Z06 in the shop. Um, if you watched the previous video, you'll see that we already started disassembling this motor so that we can pull the heads and get them fixed. In the process, I also realized that this is a remanufactured motor. Um, don't know when it was replaced, don't know the history of it. So today, before we start disassembling this further, we're gonna go ahead and do a compression check just to make sure everything is good across the board before we dive into this further. So here you see that sticker, the R dot. That means this is remanufactured. There is no VIN code stamped on the back, which means this engine is not original to this car. So like I already said, we have our compression tester here. We're gonna be doing a compression test on all the cylinders. So this compression test is basically the same on all the C6s. So what we're gonna do first, or what I've already done, is take out the starter relay and I put in this little jumper relay here with a switch that will just control the starter so you don't have to worry about turning the ignition on or anything like that and just out of habit and for good measure I removed the fuel pump fuse that's the 20 amp that goes right in there and I already have the ignition coils disconnected as well as the fuel injectors I also recommend hooking up a charger or a tender to the battery because we're gonna be running the starter over and over again um, it is important though in between each cylinder let that starter cool off for a couple minutes minutes. Um, again, because you're going to be using it a lot, you don't want to burn it out. And then all you need, like I already showed, is your compression tester, this adapter here. That's just going to thread right into the spark plug hole, get connected here, and then your gauge is going to be connected up top here. Make sure you get a decent gauge. A lot of the cheaper ones aren't as accurate, um, so you want a decent gauge that's going to show you correct values. And on the LS motors, on the driver's side, you have cylinders 1, 3, five and seven and then on the passenger side you have two four six and eight so we have that written down here i'm going to start with cylinder one work our way down and see what kind of numbers we're working with and to get that little adapter into the cylinder head i'm using an 11 16 socket um, but you definitely don't want to put a wrench on this just make it hand tight because you do have the little o-rings on there that seal it into the spark plug well all right so we have the adapter the hose and our gauge all hooked up and threaded into the hole of cylinder one and now you're just going to flip this switch let the starter turn over six or seven times um, at least until that gauge starts or stops moving up and then that will be your compression number Alright, so we're done testing cylinder one. We got 220 PSI. So now that we're done cylinder one, we're gonna swap the tester over to three and repeat the process. Your numbers may not be the same. Obviously, every engine is gonna be different. Um, and then the cam in this may be affecting those numbers as well. Not so much with it just cranking and not actually running. Um, but basically what I'm looking for is just consistency over the board. I don't want to see too much more than a 5 PSI difference between cylinders and just to make sure that this thing is healthy. Alright, so we've moved everything to cylinder 3, so let's get this set up and we will repeat the test. Alright, so at cylinder 3 we are right at about 220 again. I should have written this a little bit different so I could match the cylinders, but anyway, make sure you write down your values in the correct spot. Now we're just going to continue down the line, next go to cylinder 5, and just keep repeating everything until we're finished. And now that you guys get the idea of hooking it up to each cylinder and bumping the starter with the jumper relay, I'm going to go ahead and do the passenger side and we'll take a look at the results. Alright guys, so we're finished with the compression test and these are the results. Um, pretty darn consistent across the board. The lowest is cylinder 5 at 215, uh, 6 and 7 are 218, but that's nothing to be concerned with. So basically everything is within 5 PSI. And that's basically what I was looking for, just to make sure there was no uh, large discrepancy between the cylinders. Um, and at 5 PSI difference, uh, that is negligible. You're going to get different readings in pretty much all your cylinders. Um, you're just looking for and just making sure that all the uh, compression numbers are pretty much the same across the board. For example, on this car, um, we have low compression across the board. should be about 180 to 190. The highest is cylinder 4 at 170. Um, again, they're all low across the board. But we have 140 on cylinder 1, which is causing a misfire. Uh, determined that the rings are excessively worn. That's from a defective um, design for the pre-cat. So that's basically what you're looking for to see what your compression numbers are across the board and to pick up on a difference between one or multiple cylinders. And it's worth mentioning, I did this on a cold engine. It's recommended to do it on a warm. You will have more um, accurate results on a warm engine. And this is pretty much just a crude test just to make sure uh, that your engine is running healthy or if you're noticing any issues with a crack no start or you're burning excessive amounts of oil and you want to identify which cylinder is giving you the problem um, then you would take it a step further and actually diagnose what's going on 
whether that's worn piston rings, stuck valves, worn valves, um, and then you can um, then you can do a leak down test to further diagnose what your problem may be. I just did this test because I have everything apart and I'm starting to break this down even further and I just wanted an idea of how healthy this motor is just to make sure everything is good across the board because like I said, it's a remanufactured engine. I don't know how many miles are on it, when it was replaced, so I just kind of wanted a baseline. So this is a good video to follow if you um, are having a problem with your engine or just want to do a compression test to make sure everything is running smoothly. So now that that checks out, we can start removing everything off the top of the engine, um, intake manifold, some accessory components there, and we can pull valve covers, get rid of the rockers and push rods, and get ready to pull these heads off. So thanks for checking out this video. This process will apply and work for all C6 Corvettes. Obviously, the compression numbers are going to be different depending on your motor, um, so make sure to look those up to see what you're looking for. And again, this is just a basic test to make sure that your cylinders are compressing about the same. Um, it's nothing definitive. It's nothing that's going to pinpoint exactly what's wrong. Or, or, or tell you that everything is in fact healthy, but it does give you um, some indication of your base engine and obviously how the compression is. So thanks for checking out this video. If you enjoyed it or if it helped you, please give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing to the channel. And I'm gonna get back to taking this thing apart, so stay tuned for that. And uh, we can just see what's going on here, get these heads out, get it fixed, and get this thing back on the road. I hope everyone enjoys the rest of your day, and I'll see you next time.